The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at the beginning of that reading from Mark 5, verses 21 to the beginning of verse 24. In this section, Mark wrote, When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake, the Sea of Galilee. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus had just crossed the Sea of Galilee as it seems like he was often doing in the Gospel readings, but he had crossed the Sea of Galilee and when he came to this new port, what happened is that a large crowd of people gathered around him. Some of those people had probably followed him from the other side, and some of those people were from the new town that Jesus was in. And in the early part of Jesus' ministry, what was the case is that he often attracted some pretty good-sized crowds of people that came out to, to listen to him. And some of those people who came out to listen to him, they were curiosity seekers. They had heard of Jesus, his preaching, teaching. They had maybe heard of his miracles and they wanted to hear him. They wanted to see the miracles. They wanted to check him out. Some of the people were those who rejected Jesus. And those who rejected Jesus, they wanted to hear Jesus because, well, they probably wanted to try to find something that they could use against Jesus to discredit him, to make him look bad. And then there were those people who came out because, well, by the grace of God, they were believers in the promises of God. And they wanted to hear Jesus' life-giving word. And the fact that there were these basic three different categories of people who came out to hear him, what that just tells us is that Jesus' word invites us to go to him. The gospel in God's word, it's the power of God for salvation. It works on people's hearts and some people when they hear that message well tragically what happens is that they'll reject it and they'll remain in their unbelief and some people by the grace of God they'll hear the word and the Holy Spirit will work on their hearts and and make them into believing children of God this Jairus who's mentioned in our reading today he was one of those who was a believing child of God. He was a synagogue ruler, it says, and what that means is that he was on the board or the church council, we would maybe say, of that local church, that local synagogue, and he would have been one who was helping out with taking care of the services and the work and the business of that local church. He was one of what appears to be just a few of those who were Jewish religious leaders who were believers. He must have heard Jesus preach and teach, maybe saw miracles or at least heard of his preaching and teaching and his miracles. And now we don't know how long he was a believing child of God. Maybe God had been gracious to him and made him a believing child early in his life. We don't know those details. But he was a believing child of God just from what it tells us here. 
prior to this reading, what Jesus had done is he had cast demons out of many people. He had healed many who were sick. He had calmed a storm and, and he had performed many other miracles. And now here it is, Jairus comes to him. And what Jairus does is he comes to Jesus, he falls at his feet and he begged him. He was not like what apparently was most of the Pharisees, the self-righteous Pharisees, who looked at themselves and thought that they could earn their way into heaven by their, and in their opinion, exemplary work, their exemplary lives, which of course their lives wouldn't earn their way to heaven. But here's Jairus, a humble Christian, someone who humbly fell at Jesus' feet and begged. Jairus said to Jesus, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hand on her so that she will be healed and live. Those words actually tell us that Jairus already had faith in Jesus. The life-giving power of Jesus' word had invited him to go to Jesus, to look to him for his help. And the life-giving power of Jesus what it had already done is it had already assured Jairus that Jesus had the power to help his daughter. Because what Jairus really said to Jesus was this, if you, Jesus, touch my daughter, she will be healed. He was saying, I know you have the power, you have the ability to heal my daughter, to make her well. When Jairus said though, my little daughter is dying, the Greek words there literally say, my little daughter is at the last. This father knew that her daughter was breathing her last breath. He knew that death was something that was imminent for her. So maybe we might ask the question, why didn't he go to Jesus a little bit sooner? And well, perhaps what was the case is that like most of us, his sinful pride got the best of him and, and made him think that he could handle things on his own. But Jesus has said to us, remember, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus wants us to remember that we can't handle even the smallest problem on our own. We need our, his help. So let's not even try to handle things on our own. Jesus, through his word, invites us to come to him. He wants us to look to him for his help and strength. And when we look to him for his help and strength, then we can join the Apostle Paul in saying, I can do everything through the Lord who gives me strength. And, well, perhaps Jairus hadn't gone to Jesus before this because Jesus just simply hadn't been in the vicinity before. But now Jesus' word invited him to go to Jesus. And he would be blessed by Jesus and his word no matter what the outcome of this situation would be. Likewise, what we need to realize for ourselves is not just in troubled times, but always Jesus' word invites us to go to him. And when we look to him, we will be blessed. No matter what the outcome is in our lives, he'll give us the help that we need to live in this sinful world. And the fact is, is that he's going to keep on showering upon us his grace and his love. That's what he does through his word. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for inviting us who are weary and burdened to come to you and be blessed with your word in our lives and to be blessed with your grace, love, and forgiveness and the certain hope of eternal life through faith in you. We pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.